Hello, my name is Lewis and welcome to Gathering the Magic. Today we're looking at the top 10 most expensive cards from Adventures in the Forgotten Realms. Starting off the list at number 10 we have Treasure Vault. Treasure Vault is an artifact land you can tap for a colourless, but its real value lies in sacking it. You can tap X twice for as much as you choose and create X amount of treasure tokens. This card has just made winning with Revel in Riches even easier which may be a small indicator as to why this card's estimated value is slowly on the rise upon pre-release. Of course, this land works well in any deck that works with treasure tokens, but you really know it slots into any commander deck as it can get some good ramp should you need it. Although, after the announcement of the Hall Breacher ban yesterday, it feels a bit too soon to be talking about treasure tokens. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it because now before we get to number 9, make sure to smash that like button and subscribe for all things MTG. It's free to do, it helps me out and if you get sick of me in a few months time, you can always unsubscribe. Next on the list we have Xanathar, Guild Kingpin. Xanathar, or as Meme Master Steve lovingly calls him, Send Triplets on Steroids, is a 5-6 Beholder that says at the start of your upkeep you choose target player until the end of turn, they can't cast spells and you may look at the top card of their library and play that card and spend mana of any colour to do so. So if you're running Xanathar as commander, you want cards like Paradox Haze and others to give you that chance of having more upkeep phases to double down on opponents to choose from and have even more cards to peek at and steal. Of course, if you're just intent on having fun stealing players' cards, there are plenty of others like Gonti, Lord of Luxury and even more to exile opponents' cards and play them later for mana of any colour. And lastly, get in cards like Wise and Snitches so that you can get ahead of the game, see those cards on your opponent's library and know exactly who you're going to target on your upkeep. Xanathar is an awesome card that hopefully we will be making a budget deck tech on the channel very soon. For the next most valuable card, we have Inferno of the Star Mounts. A terrifying 6-6 dragon with flying and haste that also can't be countered, which is text that I just love to see. You can also tap one mountain to give it plus one plus zero, and when its power becomes 20, it deals 20 damage to any target. The aim of the game for Inferno is to beef up as quickly as possible. So get on all of that equipment that will beef it up, maybe even get some land that can help beef it up, but the main focus of this deck will be getting all that mountain mana. Pack in all of those many ways to gain mana, gain you treasure tokens so you'll be able to get some more mana, and most importantly, getting all those ways that stop you from losing mana between phases, then you'll really be taking advantage of Inferno to the max. I already love the thought of pairing those cards like Fling and Kazul's Fury just to have in your pocket any time to surprise your opponent and sack Inferno and absolutely destroy some of your opponent's creatures or maybe even their life total. An amazing new card that really does have the option to become a viable MTG commander. For the next most valuable, we're looking at Planeswalkers now with Grand Master of Flowers. This legendary walker says if it has seven or more loyalty counters on it, he's a 7-7 dragon god creature with flying and indestructible. One of the plus one abilities says target creature without first strike, double strike or vigilance can't attack or block until your next turn. And the other plus one says search your library or graveyard for Monk of the Open Hand and put it in your hand. So in a deck with Grandmaster of Flowers in, you want to grab in all of those ways to add counters to Planeswalkers like Gilda Barn and Doubling Season. And the easiest way to go for this extra counter strategy is to focus on Proliferate. Getting as much Proliferate action going as possible because you really want to be getting that 7 loyalty as quick as possible so Big Boy Flowers can transform into an indestructible dragon as early as you can. This is a really cool card that I hope I pack when I start cracking that AFR goodness later on this week. Just missing out on the top half, we have Loth, Spider Queen. Loth says whenever a creature you control dies, put a loyalty counter on it. The zero mana option says draw a card and lose a life. Minus three says create two, two, one black spiders with menace and reach. And the minus eight option gives you an emblem that says whenever an opponent is dealt combat damage by one or more creatures you control, if that player lost less than eight life this turn, they lose life equal to the difference. Make sure you've got all those sack creature options in a deck with Loth to take advantage of that loyalty boosting bonus. Also getting all those cards that create even more creatures because if you go wide with an army of creatures or tokens, you can use them as attacking or blocking fodder and trigger off Loth even more. You want to get in plenty of cards that also help get extra triggers from creatures dying because why just have one creature death trigger when you can have several? 
Lolf is an incredible new card that looks so fun and can cause plenty of shenanigans at a commander table. Next up we have Circle of Dreams Druid. One of the most exciting new cards from the set, the Elf Druid Guy's Cradle is a 2-1 creature that lets you tap to add a green mana for each green creature you control. This card is just mad and I love it. You can see why its pre-release price projected value keeps going up and up. If you have those decks that are pumping out creatures, especially common in green decks that love to go wide, this 3-drop green elf druid will be so worth its place in your deck. Of course, make sure to have some protection for Circle of Dreams Druid in your decks because this will be an absolute target any time it hits the field. Again, this is understandable due to the comparisons it always draws to Guy's Cradle. But as the Cradle will set you back nearly 4 figures, then you definitely want to be seeing the Circle when you're cracking them packs or just buy it yourself if you're a singles person. And the good news is you're far more likely to crack this card as with the exception of Treasure Vault, everything else on this list is Mythic Variety. This is a crazy good card, especially in the Commander format and it's a card I can see of its value stabilizing or actually increasing after release. What a card. Just missing out on the top three, we have Imrith, Desert Doom. Imrith is a 5-5 dragon with flying that has Ward 4 as long as it's untapped. Ward of course being the new strict saving ability that says when target creature becomes a target of a spell or ability, counter it unless your opponent's pays, in this case, 4. With Imrith, we really want to attack, so add in all those ways to make sure damage goes through, because when it deals combat damage to a player, you draw a card, and if you have less than 3 cards in your hand, you get to draw to the difference. So maybe a good strategy in this deck is to have plenty of those super cheap to play cards in your hand to go. Make sure your hand is always running low so that you can attack, trigger Imrith and fill up that hand again. Of course, you really want to be making sure you get that damage in, so you get all of that trusty equipment, maybe getting some of those beloved blue extra turns cards to double the effects, and lastly, getting those cards that will give you even more of a chance to get that damage through. Boy do I love Archetype of Imagination. Imrith is such a great new card and one that may even work well in a 5 colour dragon tribal deck which is still due to come up on this list. For the third most valuable card from AFR, we have Old Norbone. Old Nori is a 7 drop, 7-7 seven, seven with flying that says when a creature you control deals combat damage to a player, create that many treasure tokens. Again, this is just a gold vein pick or prying blade on steroids. Even new cards like Academy Manufacturer would be auto clues in an Old Norbone deck. Why create one treasure token when you can create two? You really want all those creatures in there with that trample, Maybe get something to give everything trample or just big boys that you know can smash through and get that combat damage to trigger old Norbone. Get in those creatures that attack every turn like Toski and creatures that give all attacking creatures a nice little bonus to really make your opponents think twice about blocking. Creatures like Scoot Swarm absolutely also have a place in this deck. Do as much as you can to make your army go as wide as possible so your opponents physically cannot block you and you're creating a butt ton of treasure tokens. And as always, have those cards that are the attacking end bringers in this deck. Ramp like crazy, have a big army, and then boost your attackers to the moon, or poison your enemies to death. You love to see it. Runner up and the second most valuable card is Demolik. This 4-3 skeleton wizard costs an island less to cast for each instant and sorcery you've cast this turn. So if you're early game and have all those one drop staple scryers, then this card is costing next to nothing, or possibly perhaps nothing at all. Nothing at all. Whenever Demolik attacks, you exile it to one instant or sorcery from your graveyard, copy it and cast the copy. So good if you're wanting to replay some much needed removal, or perhaps just need a bit more card draw to get you over the edge. Demolik also says you may cast it from your graveyard by exiling four instant or sorceries from your graveyard in addition to paying their other costs. So if Demolik is part of an Izzet deck, for example, that tends to lean heavy on not only instants and sorceries, but really loads of cheap instants and sorceries, meaning the potential recursion for Demolik is huge. Of course, this deck works wonders with all of those cards that cheapen the cost of instants and sorceries, to the point where if you get an engine like this up and running, you will most likely be really zapping your opponents into tiny little pieces. A really fantastic card, one that I really, really hope I pull come pre-release in a couple of days' time. But... There definitely is one card that I want to pull a lot more than the others. As expected, the most expensive card from Adventures in the Forgotten Realm is Tiamat. And shameless plug alert, if you haven't seen our budget Tiamat deck tech from a few weeks ago, go watch it after this. I'll leave the link in the description below. 
Tiamat is a Wooberg 7-7 Dragon God with flying that says when it ETBs, if you cast it, search your library for 5 Dragon cards not named Tiamat and put them into your hand. Of course, a Tiamat deck is obviously going Dragon Tribal. Grab all of those dragons that you have lying around, all of those cheap budget ones we cover in the deck tech, or maybe for Tiamat you really want to just break the bank and get in all of those expensive dragon bad boys and just burn those enemies to the ground like your Daenerys Targaryen flying around on Drogon. Is that too soon? Aside from the actual dragons themselves, there are so many pro-dragon cards in MTG. Cards to remove everything but dragons, cards that cheapen the cost of dragons hitting the field, and even the odd planeswalker that just loves a dragon. This is understandably the high value card of the set, and I really do honestly have a gut feeling it'll be coming my way in the first booster box I open. Because at the minute, I love that first pack look. There we have it, that is the list. Thank you for watching and don't forget to smash that like button and of course subscribe for all things MTG. Check out our link tree in the description for all of our social media and affiliate links, but for now, I'm all tapped out. So I'll see you in the next video.